Hi, everybody, and happy Talk to Me Thursday. Thursday. The noise in the background is my cat playing with the blinds. Thanks, Mary Bell. It's going to be a short one today, and that is because I'm on my way to tutoring, and also because I don't have that much to share. I talked last week, or two weeks ago, I don't know, um, about making little presents for a friend of mine who's having a baby, and we had her baby shower last week, and it was really cute. Um, and I actually did not end up making the baby booties. I'm going to make them and just give them to her later because we're friends. I'll see her after the school year is over. Um, but I didn't have time. I didn't want to fiddle with them. Uh, so instead I made a set of bibs, which, I mean, you know, you can, only, you can never have enough bibs. And I used some fun fabrics that I actually had. Um, I didn't buy anything new. Um, I lined them with a fabric that was actually given to me by my grandmother who used to sew all my grandfather's clothes. And so that worked out really well and they were cute and she seemed to like them. I tried to make them pretty uh, gender neutral because they are really pushing the not making it a girly girl room. Um, they're all about celebrating that she's a girl, but their their scheme is yellow and, and gray. Um, it's a very cute nursery, very pretty. Um, so I did a Wonder Woman bib, um, a Peace and Love bib, and one that I believe was, oh, black with yellow batik print that had was in the pattern of peace signs and said peace. So I made those, and I'll put pictures of those at the end of this video. I took some pictures. Uh, by the time I finished them, it was the night before, and I was exhausted and didn't make a video about them. That's how lazy I am. So I will be making those baby booties eventually, uh, just not right this second. And the only other thing that I'm working on at present is for tomorrow. I always do these things last minute. Stupid. My friend, my coworker, and one of my best friends is the yearbook advisor at my school and her and her students are doing a big uh, event on Friday after school, like a yearbook signing event, and they're trying to sell off the remaining yearbook, so she's doing a kind of carnival atmosphere, and so she asked me and one other teacher if we would dress up as characters uh, and do photo booths. So the kids could take pictures with us. And of course she asked me to be Bellatrix Lestrange, which I love and haven't done in a while. So I'm just going to reuse things that I have. But I, last time, Halloween, when I did my Bellatrix costume, it was just so simple. It really could have been any old witch and I didn't want that. So I thought that I should at least have some kind of gauntlets for Bellatrix because she is, after all, the Dark Lord's best lieutenant and a warrior. So I went to Hancock Fabrics today, uh, bought myself some eyelets and an eyelet toolkit. I have probably five of these, but I always lose them, so I got another one. Um, and a pack of 100, so that should definitely be enough. And I bought on sale this, um, I eh, might be real leather, but probably not, uh, Remnant. And it is, uh, it's soft, at least on the outside. And I'm just going to make some really simple, like no higher than my elbow. Uh, and that'll lace up along the inside of my arm, just for appearance's sake. But I would like to look a little more like Bellatrix, a little less like me, because Miss Frederick wears a lot of black to school. <laughs> so there's that. And so there's, those should be done tonight. And... Um, with any luck, I'll have pictures of those, and I'll certainly post pictures of the end result. <laughs> it's going to be crazy. But, yeah, so tomorrow is my last day with students, so there should be a lot more crafting in the future. I hope. I hope. And, uh, yeah, so that is it for me. And I hope you all had a wonderful week. I've watched a couple of your videos from last week, and now i got to get myself caught up on this week. Have a lovely, lovely day, and keep crafting. Bye. All right, so I'm pretty sure it's been at least three weeks since I recorded the first part of that video. It's really embarrassing. Um, and I have a couple of extra things to show that I saw. I thought I'd add them on and post them all together. So we'll see how that works. Um, I think I mentioned in the last video that I wanted to make 
um, arm pieces for my Bellatrix costume because I was participating in a yearbook event. Yearbook at my school, one of my best friends is the yearbook advisor and she wanted to have some costumed characters at her event for the kids to take pictures with. I know, crazy shenanigans, I guess. Um, so I did and I made them. And um, actually I'm really happy with how they turned out except when I put in the eyelets, um, this one actually turned out fine. Um, but it's probably just the quality. They're just, you know, they're just really easy, simple eyelets, cheap, um, from the fabric store. Um, uh, but the stress of the lacing, um, has pulled some of them loose. And it's not, I mean, a huge deal, but as far as, like, longevity, probably I will have, you know, have to make new ones. So it was kind of disappointing. Um, but they slip right on. And I can't possibly lace, I can't really lace them up properly right now. Um, it takes a while and also it really helps to have somebody else do it. <laughs> but uh, it's kind of like a corset for your arm, I guess. And I thought it looked pretty cool. Um, so I thought they were pretty effective and it just added something because my Bellatrix costume is very simple. It's, my, it's a black dress. <laughs> um, with some pretty kicking boots, but there wasn't really a lot going on. My arms were bare and I didn't really like what that was looking like. So I made these and they turned out ah, pretty cool. Um, I still have not made the baby booties. Um, and I've told the woman that I'm making them for <laughs> these. This is gonna take, can't get this off. Um, that she will get them eventually and I will show them eventually when I get them done. I'm just gonna leave this on. I can't get it off. Um, so I've kind of set that aside and was really, really excited to find, uh, to hear about the summer of stitching over at Phantom and Stitches. And the first week is Sherlock themed. So obviously I had to get on on that if you're new. Um, I really, really like Sherlock, <laughs> kind of a little too much. So of course I had to get in on that. So I designed six embroidery patterns and by design, I mean, I sketched them. They're not like they're not complicated they're very simple and some of them are look really awful um i measured them out i promise i tried to make the letters um straight and even but i wrote them by hand so they're not great but i'm happy with how some of them turned out so i thought i'd go ahead and show you because they're posted now on the phantom and stitches Flickr group so you can go and look at the um, links to the patterns and i guess that open gen will be posting those to the website soon, hopefully if they are deemed worthy. Um, so the first couple that I, um, oh, I left one of my pages downstairs. Well, okay. Sorry this is so rambly. <laughs> um, okay, so let's see. So the one that I designed is a new BBC Sherlock quote, uh, honey, you should see me in a crown. This is a Jim Moriarty quote. And this is probably my least favorite block, just because the, I don't know, it's really simple. It's fine, it's cool, whatever. Um, meh, so there's that one. Um, I had a, um, an homage to the Conan Doyle Sherlock um, with a quote from the man himself. I cannot live without brain work. It goes on to say something like, what is there possibly to live for if not the brain work? And I was pretty happy with how my brain turned out. And uh, so that I thought looked kind of cool. And I did that with a couple shades of pink. Uh, okay. This, actually this one might be my least favorite block. <laughs> but I think it's just because of what I stitched up with. And there's a lot of words. It's um, another BBC Sherlock quote. That's Mary Bell jingling in the background. Mary Bell, baby. <laughs> Every fairy tale needs a good old fashioned villain and the IOU apple. So there is that, and I, I mean, it turned out okay. Although while I was stitching the apple uh, for a while, it just looked like a big red butt. It was very unfortunate. This one I really like, even though the border did not turn out that great. It's the game is afoot. Um, even though in the BBC version he says the game is on, in the original it's the game is afoot. And so I did little um, outlines of, you know, footprints around the border. So I kind of like how that turned out-ish. And then of course I had to do a I do not shave for Sherlock Holmes. This is the very first one I designed and did. And I like the mustache, although the letters, the lettering is really off center, probably like this video. 
So there's that one. And then this one I just finished, and I'm kind of meh with it, but I wanted to make it anyway. Um, highly functioning sociopath. Um, so I got my little skull, and the purple is as close to the shade of Sherlock's purple shirt in the BBC version that I could get. <laughs> so stupid. So there's that. So that's what I've been working on for the last like week and a half. Mary Bell's crawling around on the bed over there and making a lot of noise. Um, so that has been what I've been doing. Uh, I do, I want to do something with these. I'm probably going to have to remake the Honey Seeming a Crown because I didn't allow myself um, much seam allowance, if any. Um, but I'd like to do something. Maybe I'll make a little wall hanging and give it to my friend who she and I squee about Sherlock together. We'll see. Whatever. So yes, that's what I've been doing and I'm afraid this video is really, really long. So thank you guys for listening if you've been listening and I'm really excited to see what other summer and summer of stitching um, patterns come out in the next couple days. So I think she starts posting this week. Yay! So have a good week. Bye guys. Thanks for putting up with me. <laughs>